May the God who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Good morning. I have missed you. Getting found in spite of ourselves. Because our salvation, our being saved, metaphorically or theologically and even geographically, doesn't have to have anything to do with us getting found in spite of ourselves. Many of you know that I am a sea kayaker, and in my sea kayak, I am happiest where lumpy waves meet chunky rocks. My favorite places to paddle are on the outer islands of the west and the north coast of Scotland. The inner and outer Hebrides, Sky, Mall, Iona, Orkney, Shetland, St. Kilda are all places where my soul is full. And it doesn't hurt that many of the places I've accessed after paddling through tide races and completing substantive open water crossings have included some of the earliest footholds of Christianity in the British Isles. I've sat in 6th century stone hermitages and been lowered by a rope tied around my waist down into a 7th century solitary monastic cell. And a common factor of all of these places, besides the ever-present wind and pugnacious waves, are the grazing sheep. Hundreds and hundreds of ewes, rams and lambs, munching away on pretty much every remote island I've ever ventured onto in the northern portion of the United Kingdom. And this is what I have learned about sheep. The lambs want to be close to their moms. They all look naked when they've been freshly sheared. And they will follow grass anywhere. That is, they put their heads down and chew. They don't look up to orient themselves. Instead, blade by blade, they follow the grass. If the grass grows on a flat field, there they are. If their travels take them up to a road, then they will look up, and if they see grass across the road, then they will quickly cross and continue munching, never looking to see if there's a car coming. And if the grass takes them up the side of a mountain, up they go, no fear of heights. And if the grass goes over on the other side of the mountain and down a very steep cliff, they are likely to continue on down, not really thinking about how their little hooves, aided by gravity on the descent, will not be all that handy as they contemplate trying to get back up. Which is to say, like many of us, they can, bit by bit, get themselves into a situation, a position, that is next to impossible to get themselves out of. Which brings me to one of my favorite genres of Scottish sea kayaking stories. Rescuing the stuck sheep off the steep cliffs by the salty sea. Trust me, there are hundreds of these stories. One of my favorites is when a group of friends were out paddling along a rough coast at low tide, and they looked up and they saw a lamb that had followed the tasty grass down the side of a cliff, and it was stuck on a ledge. 
And there was no way it was going to make it back up to its mom, who was bleeding at the top of the hill. So after some conversation about the intelligence of the average sheep, and also how much each one of them enjoyed the beautiful woolen cap that adorned their heads at that moment, they decided to see what they could do. And they hatched a plan. The swell on the rocks wasn't too bad, so they decided that two of them would get out of their boats and one would remain on the sea and attach one of her tow lines to one of the boats to aid in their eventual getaway. So the two of them landed, getting up on the rocks, and then both getting out and slipping around like you read about it on the brown and the green algae that just predominates the area in low tide. And then they kind of slid their way to under the ledge where the lamb was trapped. And then with one of the paddlers standing on her friend's braced knee, she climbed up and she got to even with the, with the lamb and she grabbed the lamb and pulled it on down. And between the two of them, they got it onto the reef. And then she got into her boat and then her friend put the bleeding lamb, bleating, that is not bleeding, the bleating lamb on top of her cockpit so she was holding it and then she pushed the boat out into the water and then her friend who had the tow line attached to the back of her boat pulled her off the reef and then her other friend who had put the, the lamb on her lap got into her boat, kind of seal launched right off the reef and off they went, the three of them plus the lamb, around the corner to safety where they put the little lamb on the beach next to the grass where the rest of the herd was hanging out. Now, was there any guarantee that that little lamb wasn't just going to follow the grass back up the high hill to the top and then go back over to the cliff ledge again? No. Absolutely no guarantee. It was completely possible. But the sea kayaker saved the lamb because it was a good thing to do. Not because the thought that the lamb had learned a lesson not because they thought that the lamb would somehow behave differently. Maybe it would, but it wasn't why they saved the lamb. They saved the lamb because they could. They saved the lamb to give it another chance. And more than once in my time inhabiting this earth, I have been that lamb, and I suspect that I'm not alone. We get lost, separated from the herd, floundering by ourselves in all sorts of ways. Sometimes we lose our way emotionally or physically. Sometimes our moral compass gets out of whack and we find ourselves doing things or agreeing to activities that we know are wrong or we suspect will not bring out our best selves. And sometimes we lose a part of ourselves gradually, bit by bit, like our faith or our hope, our joy, or even our ability to love, one blade of grass at a time. And then all of a sudden we look up and realize that we are alone, riddled with doubt, seemingly trapped, filled with despair. And that is when the owner of the sheep, the shepherd, says the gospel. Or, in my story, the sea kayakers come. Sometimes metaphorically, sometimes physically. And we are found in spite of ourselves. Getting found in spite of ourselves, not because we found ourselves in a difficult spot and we are now rethinking every step that led us to this precipice. Getting saved in spite of ourselves, not because we've looked up from the grass that we were chewing and we've suddenly repented and changed and reformed. Getting saved, getting found because God 
loves us. Jesus came into this world because God loves us. God's grace, love, there for the taking, even if we find ourselves trapped on the ledge of life. God comes for us. In my moments of deepest doubts and darkest fears, when I have nibbled my way out on a ledge with little recourse, God's hope, God's help has come to me. When my mom died, it was my friend Mary Ann who picked me up at the airport at midnight and drove me another hour and a half, home to my bereft family. When my career felt flat and my faith low, the words of the Psalms kept coming to me unbidden, parading through my brain. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Indeed, O Lord, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. Over and over, God comes. God holds me, holds you, holds us. Sometimes we are the lambs lost on the cliff. Sometimes we're the sea kayakers out for a paddle, who see a lamb stuck and are willing to stop and get the lamb and put it on shore safely. Not because we think the lamb will change, but because we know what it's like to be stuck on the ledge and because we care. And then there will be joy in heaven, joy in the presence of the angels, over the one who is saved. And if the lamb is safe, it has another chance. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this morning and remain with you always. Amen.